Are you ready to power up your NES for a round of pixel-perfect gaming? Well, you're in the right place, because 2023 was a groundbreaking year for the NES homebrew community, as gaming advances toward ultra-realistic graphics, a passionate group of developers and fans are keeping the NES spirit alive. They're crafting games not only to honor the rich legacy of this iconic console, but also push the boundaries of what we thought was possible in 8-bit gaming. With the sheer volume of releases last year, it's impossible to cover or play through them all. That's why we put together a special list, featuring hand-picked titles that stood out as particularly memorable. These are games that could have easily been the crown jewels of the NES library back in its heyday, and earning that coveted seal of quality. So let's dive into 10 NES games from 2023 that if you're a fan of the NES, you absolutely must play in 2024. Get ready for a journey filled with 8-bit fun. Now here we have Bio Creeps, which is a game on the NES by Nate Eilers. And the concept here is simple. You're a pair of badasses trying to blast all the enemies on the screen in order to clear the stage and move on to the next screen. Once you pass all the screens on a level, you fight a boss. Defeat it, go to the shop to buy some items to help you on your quest, rinse and repeat. The gameplay, you have a single player version or a co-op arcade action version. Now what makes this so unique is you're shooting enemies from above, so you have to like strategically find a way to get above the enemy, whether it's falling from a platform or jumping and then shooting it from above. So it gives this game a unique twist. Plus when you shoot, there's knockback, which adds to the way the game controls. So you can use this knockback to your advantage in place of a jump, or it can throw you into some sticky situations. Now I really like the graphic style in here. They're fun. Like the shop owner looks like this grizzled old badass. And overall it has a cartoon look and feel to it. I dig the sound, the soundtrack's rocking and the sound effects really add to the whole vibe. So I really like the controls of this. I like how it feels, especially when you're playing two players, it's really fun. My thoughts are once Nate completes this game, hopefully here in 2024, it's gonna be a fantastic experience, especially if you have a second player to play with. But one player is pretty fun as well. I really think if this had come out during the NES heyday, it would have been a hit game. And that's why Bio Creeps made my list. So what we have here is Steel Legion by Aeon and Star Interactive. Now I don't know much about the developer of Steel Legion, but I do know that they are a fan of video games because this is a well-made NES game. And I mean, this could have come out in the heyday of the NES and been considered a classic. But let me not get too far ahead of myself. What is this game? Essentially, this is a Metroidvania. You know the drill, you're running around trying to unlock new areas by finding different secrets, different power-ups, and different NPCs to talk to, you're fighting bosses, and it even has some areas where you're farming for life, like old school Metroid. But what I really like about this game is it controls awesome. The animation looks good, although I will say this, the game is very challenging. I would go as far as to say it's NES hard, which is just another reason I think it would have done well back in the NES heyday. As a side note, I also like how your character looks like Master Chief from the Halo series. But just look at the graphics. The backgrounds are so well detailed, and each enemy has its own personality. Plus the soundtrack, slamming. So overall, I highly recommend Steel Legion if you're up for a fairly challenging Metroidvania. Oh, and by the way, one of the things that makes it so challenging is if you die, you go back to the beginning. Yeah, you're starting over basically. But don't let that stop you. It's an absolutely fun game, definitely worth playing, especially if you're into this genre. And that is why Steel Legion makes my list. So what we have here is The Meeting, which is a new game due out this year, 2024, from Mega Cat Studios. In the meeting, you play as a minotaur named Khan, who's been slayed by a butcher, but then given the chance to find all of his missing body parts by the Greek god of meat. Essentially, the meeting is a puzzle platformer where you're dealing with enemies, you're trying to find the key, and then you use that key to get to the next room, all the while collecting body parts and other various power-ups to help you along the way. Khan's main attack is a dash, which you use to slam into your enemies to destroy them. Khan can also jump, 
and with repeated taps of the jump button, can kind of float. The things I really like about this game are the overall aesthetics. It's got a really fun and unique look and feel to the game, and the puzzles are fairly clever and challenging, but not overly so. Plus the soundtrack pretty much just rocks, and that's why the meeting made this list. So what can I say about The Trial of Carzoid? Well, this is a game that combines Arkanoid with something like Metroid. You play as a paddle and you're making your way through different boards, finding power-ups and defeating enemies. But like a Metroid, the game's non-linear, so it kind of makes it more exciting. I really like the graphics in this game. I think they're well done and really fit the mood that the developer was going for here. You've got skeletons and demons and crows. And the ball is a skull for Pete's sake, so you kind of get the whole vibe that they're going for. With The Trial of Carzoid, I really enjoy the music. It's done really uniquely for an NES game. It kind of reminds me of how they use samples in Super Mario Bros. 3, only the samples used here really align with the overall aesthetic of the whole game. So I've played through this game a few times, and what I really like about it so far is that this last time I played through it, I found a whole new way to go that I didn't realize was even there the first time I played through it. Plus, I only have a demo version of it, so I know the finished version is gonna be overall a bigger, grander, larger scaled adventure. I'm really excited to see this game finished and put out there in 2024 for everyone to play. And that's why this game made my list. So from Bite the Chili Productions, in cooperation with Raph Labs, we have the Storied Sword. Now the Storied Sword is an action platformer with the gameplay similar to games like Ninja Gaiden or Batman, in the sense where you're clinging to walls and jumping around platforming, as well as picking up different power-ups and using those power-ups to your advantage, depending on your situation. You also travel through several stages of a level until you reach the boss of that final stage of the level. I like the graphics here, they're reminiscent of old school NES games, like the aforementioned games I was talking about, but they also have their own unique style. And coming from RAF Labs, the soundtrack is guaranteed to be slamming. So be ready for a decent NES soundtrack. So what do I like about this game? Well, overall, the NES homebrew scene is lacking this kind of Ninja Gaiden Batman action game. And this really fills the spot well. And if you think those games are fun, you're gonna dig this one. I believe the Storied Sword is set to release this year in 2024. And being a member of the Bite the Chili Productions Patreon, I've had early access to it for a while now. I've watched this game develop and grow, and I feel any NES fan who love the platformers on that console will enjoy this. And that's why this made the list. Here we have Krabby Attack from Joe Sherman of Turtle Time Media. The concept here is defeat all the crabs before the time runs out by shooting shells at them. Now this is an arcade high score type of game. And so there is some strategy involved besides just completing the level. And that's where these power-ups come in. You see, you can collect these stars. And with the stars, once you clear a crab, it leaves behind a colored gem. I think that's a gem, but the idea is to shoot the gem with the stars, clearing them so the crabs cannot return, and collect a lot of points in the process. If you've played Turtle Time Media's other games, the graphics will seem very familiar to you. Joe has a very unique and cute style when it comes to his turtle games. Oh, and did I mention this is part of a series of games that Turtle Time Media has created? But I digress. This game is just pure arcade action fun. You can sit down with a friend and play co-op, where you're also kind of competing against each other, while at the same time you're helping one another. It's a very interesting mechanic, and I definitely recommend playing two players if you have the chance. And just another reason to love this game is its 
family-friendly fun. You can get the kids, you can get grandma in on this, everybody can enjoy it. And that's just one of the many reasons Krabby Attack made the list. Here we have The House in the Cemetery by Dalen Retro Games. The concept here is your uncle has purchased a mansion to conduct his experiments in, and your job is to explore this mansion and solve puzzles to help your uncle rid his new property of unwanted guests. So this game is kind of like a point and click adventure, only instead of pointing and clicking, you walk around and interact with the object just by pushing the A button. And most of this game is puzzle solving, you're finding objects, doing particular tasks in order to get to the next area. I'd say the gameplay kind of reminds me of Maniac Mansion meets Earthbound. However, it's not really either of those games. This has really got its own thing going for it. And what I really like about it is the humor elements that Dalen put in here. There's all kinds of fun little secrets to find. And there seems to be a lot of inside jokes for people who are NES fans and fans of things that are retro. Like, for example, these Ninja Turtles are somehow part of the gameplay. It's a fun little nod. When I played, I found myself exploring everywhere, clicking on everything I could find, and just overall enjoying a lot of the dialogue. So if that's something that sounds appealing to you, I'd say this game is a win. It definitely appealed to me, and being a fan of games like Maniac Mansion and Earthbound, for me it's a no-brainer as to why this game made my list. So here we have Kingdom Crisis by Ninja Dynamics. The concept here is this is a post-apocalyptic action-adventure game where your character wakes up in a dungeon and is quickly sent on a quest to find someone named Sophie. You start with the ability to jump and swing a sword, and then you're reading signs and flipping switches to progress in this Metroidvania-like game. So you know the drill. You make your way through the parts of the levels, uncovering secrets and power-ups to get to the next area. So what do I like about this game? Well, at first, the fun size graphics threw me for a loop. I didn't really know what to think of them, but the more I got used to them, the more I really enjoyed them for what they are, which are very tiny sprites that are well animated. You know what they're supposed to be. Sure, you might have a little eye strain, but it also kind of makes this world feel a lot bigger and more grand seeing things on such a small scale. And then the juxtaposition to that small scale is the very large sprites when you come across an NPC somewhere and you talk to them to progress the story. On top of that, the adventure here is a lot of fun. The puzzles are interesting and not always so obvious. I've played this game for a few hours and I still haven't got through the entire demo. However, I keep coming back for more. And this leads me to believe that Ninja Dynamics has something special on their hands here. They're definitely a creator for the NES that's one to watch out for. And that's why Kingdom Crisis made the list. Here we have Over OBJ by Little Sound. I'll get straight to the point. Over OBJ or Over Object, whatever you want to call it, is straight up a bullet hell shooter on your NES. The things I love about this game are the graphics, which seem to be pushing the capabilities of the NES. I mean, just look at all of the bullets and sprites on this screen. And on top of the graphics, you have a great soundtrack, which really helps you get through some of these pumping, heart-pounding moments. The play control here is great. I have nothing to complain about. So if I get killed, it's because my skills were not good enough, not because the controls suck. So I'd say this game plays exactly like you'd want this kind of game to play. In overall BJ, you have two weapons. You have your main standard straight ahead shooter, and then your second weapon is a smart bomb, which doesn't destroy everything on the screen, but will remove all the bullets of the bullet hell. So if you're in a tight spot, be sure to use that. So normally I'm not into bullet hell games, but every once in a while, one comes along that really piques my interest and I enjoy because it, it plays so well. And overall, BJ just happens to be one of those, which is why this made the list.
Before we get to the final game on the list, let's go over some honorable mentions, which is really just a way for me to include a couple more games that I think are worth playing. So make sure to check these out as well. So here we have a game that definitely had to make my list, which is Sam's Journey on the NES. Sam's Journey draws inspiration from iconic titles like Super Mario Bros. 3 and really Super Mario Bros. 2 as well. But don't be fooled that it's a Super Mario Bros. clone exactly. While it plays like those games, it's definitely got its own thing going on. There's tons of secrets and collectibles here, and you have the ability to transform into different characters such as Elvis or a pirate and certain secrets will require you to have those unique abilities. I'd say the game controls very tight and responsive, just like you want this kind of platformer to control, and the soundtrack does what it needs to do by pushing you along on your journey with a bunch of jaunty tunes. So what I really like about Sam's Journey is the variety here. You have a ton of unique enemies, you have all these special suits that you can change into, and so while interacting with these different enemies, while wearing different suits, the gameplay feels much more enhanced. I also like the challenge. I think Sam's Journey is a little bit more difficult than, say, a Super Mario Brothers, especially if you're trying to collect everything. There's unique platform puzzles, as well as some of the enemy placement is fairly challenging. Overall, if you're a fan of NES platformers, like I am, I think Sam's Journey is a must-get if you're into getting new games for the NES. The developer pulls no punches here and creates just a fantastic experience. And that is why Sam's Journey makes the list. And there you have it, a tour through the vibrant, innovative world of NES homebrew gaming in 2023. Each game we've showcased today is a shining example of how creativity and passion can breathe new life into a classic console, proving that the spirit of 8-bit gaming is not just alive, but thriving. As we look forward to more incredible creations in 2024, we encourage you to explore these titles, experience these games, and support the amazing developers that keep our beloved NES legacy going strong. Until next time, happy gaming! and see you soon.